Lyric sheets up here on the left of the stage. There's two handouts, so make sure you grab one of each. And we'll start here in just a minute. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Kirtan this evening. Um, let's just start by either closing your eyes or maybe choosing a neutral gazing point somewhere on the floor and taking in a deep inhale together. Long exhale out. Deep inhale. Long exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Just letting your awareness move down into your body. Noticing how the body is feeling. Moving down, down. Letting your awareness rest in the low belly with your breathing. So maybe it's helpful to place one hand at the low belly, below the navel, if that feels good for you. And just noticing the natural rise and fall of your breath down in the belly. And then place your other hand at your heart center. And with each inhale, as your, your awareness is in the low belly, we're just going to visualize that breath moving from the low belly up into your heart space. We are breathing our prana, our energy into our hearts. Softening, opening the heart. For our bhakti practice this evening. really sensing into the stillness around the space of the heart. A sense of softness and closeness. And then we'll start with three ohms. So ohm is the first mantra, it is the source of all mantra. And mantra is a sacred utterance. Mantras are a way that we express our spiritual longing, the spiritual impulse to know who we truly are, which comes from the divinity within this divinity that wants to know itself through us, to know itself and the nature of love that it is. So when we chant mantra this evening, that is an expression of this impulse that we all have, this longing to realize who we truly are and to embody it, which really is the dharma of our heart. This is our dharma, meaning spiritual truth that is both inner in the realization part of it and outward 
and how that comes through us, that divinity comes through us when it's realized. So we'll take in a deep inhale.
So kirtan, which is devotional chanting, is one of the core practices of bhakti yoga, which is the yoga of love and devotion. And in bhakti, bhakti teaches us that our dharma, which is referring to dharma as our purpose in a sense, right? It's related to purpose. Our dharma is spiritual truth, both as we realize it internally and as we express it outwardly. And these are really not separate, ultimately. They're really one and the same thing. And bhakti teaches us that our purpose is to awaken to the divine love within that is who we are at our essence and then to embody it through giving and receiving it and through service. So when we chant the holy names, kirtan, um, we are awakening this divine love within. And so even though these names have a lot of different meanings and stories and aspects of the self that are associated with them, and that's all really beautiful too. Um, it's not its not necessary that we understand or know all of those stories because the names are revealing their meaning to us as we chant them because they are evoking this divine love. And, and there are a lot of different words for this divine love. Um, some people might call that God. Some people might call it life or spirit or the sacred. Maybe you call it Krishna. Maybe you call it the universal Christ, um, Buddha nature. So these are all just different names for that. Whatever that, that inner sameness is that expresses itself as love when we become more aware of it. So all of the practices of bhakti aim to do this, um, to awaken this, this divine love. It's really a practice of divine remembrance. We're going to um, start by chanting the Hanuman Chalisa together, which um, is uh, one of your handouts. I want to dedicate this to Kim Eisner in the front row. Because I was going to sing this on Sunday, and then I found out she was going to be here tonight only. So I'm singing up with them. <laughs> she loves the Hanuman Chalisa. Um, and also, they're representing Ashtanga Yoga Louisville, new Ashtanga studio in Louisville, Catherine and Kim. And Catherine's teaching tomorrow morning, top of the knob. Just want to give a little shout out. Because that's my home studio is where they were from. They're from to Yoga East. So anyway, that's... Not have to do with the Hanuman Chalisa, but um, so it, so the Hanuman Chalisa is all about Hanuman, um, this monkey god, right? And we're basically like describing him and you know worshiping him and saying all these cool things about him. You can read the translation if you have, have the handout. It's a forty verse prayer, um, and it's in a language called Avadi, which is a pre uh, ancient pre Hindu. Uh, language. It's actually not Sanskrit. Um, and it's the most wordy thing that we will chant tonight. So the rest of the stuff will be much simpler. Um, but you're welcome to read along and um, chant along. There's handouts up here on the stage if you didn't get one. Um, or you can just listen. That's a beautiful practice too. Um, at the end, we will sing Shri Ram, J Ram, J J Ram over and over. So that is an easy time to join in if the other text is a little bit too intimidating. But Hanuman, um, the story of Hanuman, I should get Pete up here because he's actually read the whole thing. Like, it's like 700 pages and Pete has read it all, like twice. Um, but Hanuman, is, he's a story of somebody who finds his dharma. He, when he um, happens upon Ram, he realizes that Ram is the divine, and he sees that he is also the divine and that they're not separate, and then he devotes his life to reuniting Ram and Sita. That's his, his dharma. It's both, again, that inner realization and outer. And Ram and Sita represent form and formless, and this, this uh, reuniting them is um, a metaphor for how um, Hanuman, who is, represents devotion, right? Our devotion 
is what collapses this illusion of separation um, that we uh, have a tendency to fall into. And it's also collapsing um, the illusion of separation of the form and the formless, because ultimately it's all one thing that's happening. So, yeah.
you for your claps. <laughs> so um, your claps are beautiful and they're perfectly fine. We do usually sit in silence after the chant. Um, and the reason for this is because chanting is a way that we purify the mind. The mantra is representative of form and the silence that follows the mantra is representative of the formless, pure consciousness. Um, Nina Rao, who is actually, she is the arranger of that particular um, version of the Hanuman Chalisa. Um, she says that chanting uncovers the dust over our hearts so we can receive the clear light. So when the chant is over, there's an invitation to just for a few moments to really rest in that silent space, to receive the clear light. Right? And that's the beautiful thing about kirtan and chanting is that it's just by doing the practice that we get the benefits. We don't have to think about the practice. We don't have to get really intellectual about it or have a whole lot of understanding about it. We don't have to talk about it. We just do it. You just do it and it works on you and it uncovers the dust over your heart, clears out all this other stuff and so that we are um, we can receive the clear light and we can give the clear light, you know, from this heart space. Okay, we're gonna chant some more. Um, oh, my daughter Zora is gonna join us for this. The Hare Krishna mantra, so this is in your, your laminated sheet. It's number one, I believe. Um, this is the Maha mantra. It's known as the Great Mantra. And it's Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. We will do it in call and response. Um, so I will sing the mantra, and then um, Zora and Gabriella and Charles um, will sing the response. That's when you all also sing the response. Um, you can sing with me if you want to. There's That would be beautiful too, but that's just generally how it's structured. <laughs> and we will, this one does get moving a little bit, so please feel free to move your body, to get up and dance if you want to, if it's calling to you.
goes along for the books for me. Y'all are awesome. Oh my God, the energy is amazing. Thank you all so much for chanting and dancing and opening your hearts and the space together. It's such a gift. Um, I want to take a minute just to introduce the band members. So we are Anahata Bhakti. Um, Anahata is the name of the heart chakra. Bhakti means devotion. Anahata also means pure or unstained. So pure devotion is, is what our, our name means. Um, my name is Emily. <laughs> We have Gabriella, the lovely Gabriella. And on percussion, we have Thomas. Or <laughs> on the electric guitar, we have my husband, Barry Smith. our next chant. So, um, <laughs> that he wrote. And also, just a little shameless book here, Charles is doing an online songwriting workshop in June. And y'all need to check that out, I'm just saying. You can follow him on Instagram, Charles Mitchell Sounds. Um, so you're gonna hear some of that magic right now. So this is a hymn of the new body. This is also a sing-along song. Oh, I'm sorry. It's on the the words are on the back of your laminated sheet. It's like the first one I think on there. Um, so once you get the feel for it, you just sing along. Join in whenever you're ready.
Westerners, we have a song in English that is bhakti yoga. That song is bhakti. That pray with every breath. Um, Maharaji Neem Karoli Baba, whose his picture is on both altars um, here. Um, you know, he just would always say Ram 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 Ram, or he would write it Ram 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 Ram. That was one of the practices that he did and that he taught. Um, and that's that pray with every breath. That's just that constant remembrance. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Charles, so much you. for that. Thank you. So I'm going to talk for a minute because I like to talk about things. And you like to talk now. about things. Yeah. <laughs> You're good at it. So, um, so when I was preparing for this weekend, I had to get out this book, Eckhart Tolle, 
A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. This book changed my life 15 years ago. It changed the trajectory of my life. Um, I, I think of my life in terms of before and after this book. So I was like, I have to look at this book when I'm, I'm preparing for my path to purpose. <laughs> And um, it's just gold, this book is gold. And of course it's a book about spiritual awakening and it's made to be, you know, it's, it doesn't align with any one tradition or path. It's just written by a guy who, you know, woke up very powerfully and, and wrote about it. And, um, you know, just being really present and identifying with that presence, um, whatever you want to call that. And, so it's a book about what we are, realizing what we are and realizing what we are not. And um, when he talks about purpose, he talks about inner purpose and outer purpose. And he says the inner purpose is primary. And that is for us to realize who and what we are, for us to awaken to this divine love. This is what Bhakti is teaching. That is the primary purpose. And that um, exists outside of time, meaning it, it, it only ever exists right now. There's only ever this moment. So it's only ever happening now. And whatever we're doing in this moment is the purpose. It's, he says if you have to walk over to pick up a glass at the other end of the room, while you're walking, your purpose is to walk. While you pick up your left foot, your purpose is to pick up your left foot. Mm. Once you get to the glass, and you're picking up the glass, then that is your purpose, right? Uh -huh. So, um, and what he says is that the outer purpose is really important too, but it's secondary, meaning that if you don't have the inner purpose, then the, you're never gonna be satisfied with the outer. The outer appearance is never going to satisfy you if the inner hasn't been realized, if we're not um, bringing loving attention to that space of presence that we are. So um, there's another quote by uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj, who was a Hindu sage, um, that kind of speaks to this too. Um, he says, take care of the most important. The lesser will take care of itself. Mm. You do not tidy up a dark room. You open the windows first. Letting in the light makes everything easy. Find yourself and everything will fall into its proper place. Mm. So I love this quote. I do think it can be a little bit deceptive because mm. sometimes in, in spirituality, well, I know I've been this way. I've fallen into this trap of like, I just need to wake up and then everything will be fine. Like, I'll have it all figured out and I won't have to like work anymore, you know? <laughs> like as my teacher, Adi Shanti oh. says, like people think they wake up so that they can go back to sleep. Like now I don't have to think about anything, right? Because I'm awake now. Just like, that's, that's not what it's about at all. It's like this ongoing journey. Every single moment is the opportunity to bring that awakeness to the moment and to move how that moment is calling for. And that means like, it's a little bit of like resting in the unknown because we're, we're not gonna know until we're in this moment and now we're in this one and now we're in this one. And we can only ever, you know, really move from an authentic place in that, you know, now, 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 you know, that's it, that's it. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's true that letting in the light first, right? Bringing awareness to this, this, this deep space of our being, coming back to that again and again and again, which is what devotion is. It's that coming back and back and back. Um, tending to that is, is, what lets the light in, but we have to keep coming back to it. It's not that we find it one time. I opened the windows once and now I'm good, you know? It's like this ongoing, ongoing process. Okay, 
Should we chant some more? Um, okay, we're gonna do, oh, Sita Ram Jay Hanuman. If Zora's around, she could come sing, but I'm not sure if she is around. She just here. <laughs> if you want. I mean, she can jump up if she wants to. Um, okay, so this one is on your mantra sheet. I don't know what number it is. Three, thank you. That's probably right, yeah. Sita, Ram, and Hanuman, who we already have talked about this evening. So we're just singing the names of the deities, Sita, Ram, and Hanuman. J is victory two. At one point we say bolo, which means sing. So victory two, sing to these deities, which again is just invoking our own divinity within. Sita Ram Hanuman Sita Ram Sita Ram
I'm, I, I wonder, like, can I take it further than I've ever taken it before? Is it possible? I don't know. It could have been one of those times. I don't know. You should fast next time. You just wait. You just wait. We're going to top it. So we, um, we have one more. side waivers, right? <laughs> We have one more song, and it's it's short, so because I know we're, we only technically have a few minutes left. Um, we have one more song, but we're going to be back Sunday at 4:30, everyone. So with all new songs. So, um, but this this last song is uh, that we're going to sing is Jay Guru Dev, and it's on the back of your sheet. Um, this one is a Krishna Das song, and it's um, mostly in English. And the chorus, um, we say Jay Gurudev a few times in a row. Jay Gurudev means victory to the divine teacher or victory to the inner guru. So we're chanting to this inner guru that knows the dharma of our heart. This is this inner guru that we, um, we are coming back to over and over through the practice of bhakti to make this, this inner guru more conscious so that we can... Um, we can live from an informed place um, and our, our inner purpose and our outer purpose becomes one thing. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite songs ever and one of the reasons is because at the, the end we sing I Live By Your Grace over and over and I just, like for me personally, um, you know, having these moments where we're, we're really like actually awake to the miracle of our own existence. I mean, we can, we can talk about that, like, but, but when you're really awake to it, like the fact that, you know, your heart is just beating all on its own. And, and that, I mean, there's all these other bodily processes that are happening all on their own too, like an infinite, infinite number of them, plus all of the external conditions that are existing all on their own to support our existence. I mean, but, but the heartbeat is sort of like, for me, it's like the most immediate thing that I can place my attention on, just that it just keeps coming. It's like, like for me, it's this like access point for like, this is the will for the divine to know itself through form. It's in our, our heartbeat, that will. It just comes and comes and comes. And so when we're really awake to this miracle, then everything, you know, we talk about dharma and purpose and all of that, it just becomes so obvious and so simple and profound at the same time. So this is just sing along.
Let's take in a final deep inhale together. Exhale. Spring <laughs> hands to heart center. Take a moment just to feel this deep, deep gratitude for this time together. Gratitude for my path fest, for Terrapin Hill Farms, mm. Pete and Brenda, Gabriella, everyone who has worked so hard to make this all come together, and to all of you for being here, for being present, for creating this collective, beautiful heart space, confluence of sacred rivers. Thank you mm. each so much for being here. Deep, deep bows to each one of you. Have a beautiful, beautiful evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. This is our post-Kirtan jam session.